Good morning, you're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. Well, have you ever thought of getting married right here at the track? One couple did. We'll have the details coming up, plus lots of great races from Pocono and right here at Harris, Philadelphia, coming up in this next half hour. The Pennsylvania Sire Stakes gets underway at Pocono with some champions battling for supremacy. Plus, we'll talk with Georgie Knapp about driving classic Martine and talk with Simon Allard about giving back to the community. We'll also head to the Meadowlands for some history in the Cutler Memorial. The hottest horse casters on TV are bringing you racing's fastest paced half hour. It all starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Hi there, Kim Asabi, and welcome to PA Harness Week. We're your groovy twosome. She's Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross. And speaking of groovy, whatever happened to that word? Boy, did that word fall out of favor, didn't it? The, everything was used to be groovy. I, yeah, I know. And I think last year, didn't we talk about bringing that back into style? And it should be back. I think it should be. So seriously, like today, we're going to start <laughs> telling, like, using Groovy regularly, And you the know? folks look Groovy out there, look at watching yeah. PA Arts Week right now, uh -huh. don't they? Mm -hmm. The only word that remains unfettered, still cool, never run hip, is cool. It's cool, yeah. Cool is never yeah. out of style. Yeah, because I always liked when people used bad. Bad. Like, oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah. You're like, wait, not good? No, 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 it's bad. Like, it's good bad. I'm hip. <laughs> Why don't we crash out of my pad later on? <laughs> so groovy. All That's right. so groovy. Want to give a special shout out to a couple of great folks I met in Hamilton, and they were from Hamilton. Uh, amateur driver Matt Zuccarello and his fiance Kim Velarde, and they are just big, major, as they call it, Bahawi fans. They watch the show every week, and Matt's an amateur driver, and believe it or not, he actually proposed to Kim in the winner's circle right here at Harris, Philadelphia. I believe that. Do you know why? Why? Because we had it on the show. <laughs> Is that what it was? Did, yeah. Is that what it was? <laughs> I knew it looked familiar. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All righty. Now, let me tell you this, speaking of cool and speaking of Harris Philly, if you are not here tomorrow at Harris Philly, I don't know what you're thinking about if you can't call yourself a harness racing fan because there are such great races going on. The Betsy Ross, the Maxi Lee, and the inaugural edition of the Jerry Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was going to talk about this later, but let me just tell you right now the Maxi Lee off the hook. Oh. Be a magician, Father Patrick, uh, market share, classic Martine. I mean, it's crazy. Is it going to be, who do you like, the Queen Bee or the Horse of the Cloth? I, oh, Father Patrick. Oh, Father Patrick. Say, yeah. <laughs> All right. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even want, I don't know. I got you. Yeah. Well, let's get to the action without any further ado, okay? It was Saturday's second race at Pocono. It was for Open Trotters, and Heather's got that for you. Speaking of, I just mentioned Classic Martine. Here she is. Yes, the first is $30,000. This is an eight-horse field, and actually, the two horses that are getting bet the most both happen to be females. One is number five. It's Classic Martine, the one to my favorite, yeah, I know, right? Um, she was a 2014 Trotting Mayor of the Year, and she is coming off a very impressive win. Number seven is Shake It Carry. Um, not only was she the 2014 Trotting Three-Year-Old Philly of the Year, but she was the overall Trotter of the Year. So we've got two champions in this one race. Now, Shake It Carry practically flawless last year. This year, not so stellar, but I'm a big Carry fan, and. Maybe she's just a little slow getting a groove on this year. George Knapp rating very well for Classic Martine, and this one has coasted out to a two-length lead now. Classic Cowdy having a hard time keeping up. First over there, Weisenheimer, not much happening for him. And it's tag up and go, buried on the inside. Shake it, carry second over with Tactor, still has six to make up. And then you've got Dance Hall Mistress zooming and way back to Weisenheimer.
Eisenheimer. Three quarters, 125 and two, 27 and four, third panel. And now Classic Martine is separating. She's out by four. Classicality is second, but nowhere near the leader. Then Weisenheimer and Shake It Carry. Top of the stretch. And for now, Classic Martine just needs to stay flat. Her lead is about seven over Classicality. Classic Martine had total control from the word go. And I love a total control freak, you know? So <laughs> she's trained by Chris Oak. She ends up winning in 153 and one. The exact to here, a no brainer. We have Classic Martine, and then second was classicality, right? And then third was Shaka Carey, who I absolutely adore. She really, um, she shuck her tush off coming home that last half of a mile. Now, uh, <laughs> you know, it's really, it's still there. Don't start any, she okay. still has, you know, <laughs> back end. Right. Yes, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> now, getting back to Classic Martine, yeah. the driver is George Napolitano Jr. He's on his way to 7,000 victories. He's super close, but I don't care how many wins you have, it's always something to really relish when you drive a horse like Classic Martine and Charlotte McBride caught up with George about the big win. All right, thanks guys. I'm here with Georgie Knapp. You had quite the experience at Pocono this past week getting to drive Classic Martine, the former trotting mare of the year. What was that like? And I know you had a big win with her too. Yeah, she's a great horse and uh, she has great owners and a great trainer. I'm just thankful to, to be on her. What did it feel like to be on, on such a great horse? It's about time, right? Yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, it, great horses make uh, make drivers look really good, and that's that's about what it is. She's just awesome to drive. She don't do anything wrong, and she's really powerful. Now I know tomorrow the Maxi Lee, and you're going up some other great horses. Market share, be a magician, Father Patrick. What's your strategy in this one? You know, I don't know the strategy yet. I really don't ever plan anything out, but you know, anything could happen. We drew bad, unfortunately, but uh, you know, I just got to play it out when uh, the gate springs, see what happens, and uh, go from there. So you're hopeful. Oh, I'm always hopeful, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, George. Thanks for joining us. We're going to send it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, George. On your way to 7,000 wins. Woo, that is something else. Saturday's 8th at Pocono, open pacers in the limelight. 30,000 bucks on the line. Number three, Alexis Jackpot with Georgie Knapp was even money. Number five, Clear Vision, named after the eye drops, no doubt, was nine to five with Matt Kikaley. Number eight, Do Me That Again with Simon Says was five to two, and Jim Bavidia has got that call. It's Alexis Jackpot by about a length and a quarter. Do Me That Again once again finds himself in the pocket. Clear Vision is third, still saving ground for Kikaley about three away. A gap two to beach his own adventure bound, trying to Come on, first over for Marcus Miller. Further back, Pop Cop and Quick Jolt. Alexis Jackpot has stretched it out to two now, two and a half at three quarters. 121 and four, 27 and three, third panel. Alexis Jackpot trying to separate. Clear vision waits no longer. He steps to the outside. Do me that again, trying to come on further back to beach his own fourth. Top of the stretch, it's Alexis Jackpot. Alexis Jackpot got away third and sat in on a 26 flat opening split. Georgie Knapp pulled on the right line, got the lead, then cruised home, winning in 149 and three, real racehorse time. Do me that again with second. Clear vision could see clearly now with two back in third. And when we come back, I wouldn't do that, was it? No, it's actually really good. <laughs> Thank you. When we come back, I promise not to sing, but I cannot promise not to show you sire steak races from Pocono. Go away. They're coming at Lions, Levi Lewis on all sides. Amora Beach just about even. Life, it all comes down to the things you do, the places you see, the people you meet. It's all of the beautiful things, the incredible things, and the spectacular things that makes us feel unexplainable things. Life is going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Harness Racing fans, you all getting ready for Harris Philly tomorrow. It's a big, big day. But for right now, we're going to go to the first race, the opener at Pocono, and see Pennsylvania Sires take action. Colt and Gelding Pacers. 
in the spotlight. Yes. And Heather's got that for you. It's actually the first of four divisions here. Not legs. Um, no, not legs, divisions. Okay, now we've got number two, Levi's um, Lions, Levi Lewis. Four to five favorite here, and actually he's just making his first start of the year, but he was a winner of $360,000 last year, so of course. That may have influenced the better somewhat. Right, exactly. Yeah. Number five, McCardle's Lightning, been racing at Philly, ships over to this 5 eighth mile, and then number four is Amora Beach, trained by Dave Maneri, who trained, he's watching the Meadowlands Pace winner last year. It's Lions, Levi Lewis with the lead. Kakali asking for a bit more early on the back stretch. Could be a sign of trouble here. Amora Beach on the outside is coming up quick on the leader, only a long neck away. Trading up about a length and a half back with the good pocket spot. McCardle's Lightning second over, right up behind his cover. Also on the outside, Cha-Ching Hanover with Cooperstown sixth, only two back on the inside. And the trailer, Tommy Terror. Three quarters, one, 23 and one, 27 and three, third panel. They're coming at Lions, Levi Lewis on all sides. Amora Beach just about even. Three wide, McCardle's Lightning trading up desperate for a spot on the inside. At the top of the stretch, Lions, Levi Lewis in shaky town and it's McCardle's Lightning who takes the lead for Anthony Napolitano. McCardle's Lightning thunders home. You see what I did there, right? right he was it. sitting last at the half, but you know where he finished? Right on top, a lifetime mark of 151, actually equal to the lifetime mark. Anthony Napolitano is in the bike. Nice price, six to one there. Mm. Steve Elliott trains McCardle's Lightning for the owner breeder. You'll never guess what their name is. The Lightning Stable. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. I was going to guess that. <laughs> no home run for Cooperstown in here. He took second. Amora Beach was third. Let's go to the third, second division of four. Number two, lost for words. Jim Morrow Jr. was odds on at four to five for Brian Brown, the trainer, not the FX star of the movie. Remember the movie Brian Brown? <laughs> FX, you do out there, right? Okay. All right. Number five, all beef, no bull, was seven to five with Simon Allard. Number four, cardiac fashion with Georgie Knapp, was seven to two. Here's the call. Cardiac fashion has it by about a length. Lost for words. Coming right back up behind him in the pocket there. All beef and no bull. Still saving ground third. On the outside, no help for PV coming home. And now lost for words. Pulls the pocket, sensing weakness in cardiac fashion and brushes right by. Fifth is Lions again. Further back there to uh, Kona Kid. And lost for words is clear by two. Three quarters, 123 even. 27 and one in the back. It's lost for words. Extending his lead to three now. Cardiac fashion defenseless for that move. All beef and no bull wants to get out there and further back to PV coming home. Top of the stretch and Lost for Words is lonely up front here for Jim Morrow Jr. The lead is about six. Lost for Words was not lost for pace, not lost in space either. Winning this Pennsylvania Sire Stake Heat by a length wrapped up in 151 and four. All beef and no bull. Bit off a little bit more than he could chew and was second best. No bull. Cardiac fashion was dressed to kill with no place to go except the show for the dough that is and now let's go on to the next one okay third of four divisions here number six is blood brother six to five favorite he's been impressive two for two this season but i was actually surprised that he is the favorite because there's number five rise up now He's four for four this season. He's coming off a 150 and two victory at Pocono. Blood brother by about a length and three quarters on the outside. That's uh, Allard with Rise up now, and he's going to get in front of Colorful Speech, and he'll take to the inside for some cover. Meanwhile, Rufo begins a first over move about five off the pace and starts to move up. Big gap back there to Camps Fernando, Joe Hill, and Affluenza. But Blood Brothers looking strong up front. Three quarters, 122 and two, 26 and four. On on the back. Blood Brother just pacing between the raindrops here by two now over Rise Up now. Rufo struggling to move up third further back. Colorful Speech. Top of the stretch. It's still Blood Brother by a length and a half. Rise Up now coming up at him now on the outside. Blood Brother trying to hold together. Rise Up now is rallying and the fractions catching up with Blood Brother. Rise Up now. He's five for five this year. Rise Up now makes it five in a row for 2015. Um, he wins this time in 151 and three over a sloppy track. Simon Allard's in the bike, and you know Simon was actually down to drive one of his brother Renee Allard's horses, oh. but he didn't take Renee's horse. He took Brian Brown's horse. So can you believe he's like, yeah, um, I'm like totally not gonna drive your horse, and don't tell mom. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> the other guys had 800 <laughs> training percentage. Yeah, right I here. know. Ryan Brown right. is like totally five alarm fire. He <laughs> is out of control this season. Good for him. Blood Brother set the pace. He took second while Rufo was third. All right. Saturday's 10th. Pennsylvania Sire Stake Action, fourth of four divisions. Number six, Wakasashi Hanover with Jim Royal Jr. was odds on at three to five. The Ron Break. The Ron Burke trained entry of number one, Rich Wisdom with Ant Knapp and 1A, Yankee Bounty with Matt Kaley with two to one, number three, Paparazzi Hanover with Georgie Knapp was four to one. Here's the call. The Yankee Bounty slowed that down nicely and should have plenty left in the tank. His lead about a length and a quarter still well under wraps here. Inside Wackazashi Hanover has the pocket seat. Could be a sprint between the top two later. Outside, here comes a first over from ASAP Hanover and he starts to make up ground for McNair. Boxed in fourth, Dragon Eddie. Now Paparazzi Hanover off the pylons for fifth. Further back to Cole Hanover and Rich Wisdom. Three quarters, 124 and four. 27 and four, third panel. Things sped up there, but Yankee Bounty still looks in control. Inside the pocket seat for Wakazashi Hanover and Dragon Eddie looking for room third. Top of the stretch. And now Yankee Bounty and Wakazashi Hanover will go toe to toe. Look at them pick up the pace here. And Yankee Bounty on the outside can't hold back. Wakazashi. Hanover. Yankee Bounty left like a paper towel bought in the Bronx and grabbed the lead. Wakasachi Hanover also left and took the two hole. That's how they stayed to the stretch when Wakasachi blew by the win in 152 flat. Yankee Bounty held on like Brawny for the belly. Number five, Dragon Eddie 40 to one with Mike Simons got third. Congratulations to the trainer, Joanne Looney. King. My mom. Uh huh. Hashtag train like a girl. All yeah. right, good stuff. <laughs> when we come back with BA Harness Week, we're going to show you an unbelievably humongous payoff right here at Harris Philly. Don't go away. And here comes Better Business out three wide at 89 to 1. Better Business. It's showtime. It's all about the action, the odds, the wagers. It's all about who drives who. It's all you need to be part of the action. PA Harness Week, Harness Racing's fastest paced half hour. Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Philadelphia. Online at harnessweek.com. Hello there, you, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather, I'm Steve, and Heather, Another driver is doing great things in this community, right? Yeah, recently we had Yannick Jinger on the show, and he went to a French class mm. near where he lives in New Jersey, and he talked about harness racing. And now, recently, Simon Allard in Pennsylvania, he went to his daughter Amelia's daycare, building Ooh. blocks, and he didn't just go there go there to talk he actually brought a horse and his tack and everything wow. so Jen Starr caught up with Simon to find out about this great experience for the kids with driver Simon Allard who had a huge morning by going to Building Blocks Learning Center and teaching the children all about harness racing Simon how did this whole idea come about actually it was a career day, a day and they asked Sophie my girlfriend uh, to come for, uh, to show them what she was doing for a living. She said, oh, we got to bring a horse. And she pretty mu much left me alone with that after that. And they all asked me, hey, you Simon, you coming? You're bringing a horse? Oh, all right. Uh, so I found the horse. I asked uh, Pierre Parody to bring his horse priceless edition. I borrow uh, Marty Fine's trailer. And, you know, overall, we all re realized the same thing at the end. It was great. Like, the kids loved it. And uh, it was awesome. I would do it again, like... Uh, when I dropped the tailgate and I brought the horses, the horse out and showed them my race bike and I give a ride to Amelia on the race bike. They uh, show them my helmet, my safety vest, uh, all my equipment I wear at night when I drive horses. And uh, the kids were really impressed and they watched the races on the laptop. And uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. And uh, you know what? There's more kids, more people that know about the game now. And maybe who knows those kids going to tell their parents to come to races. And that's never bad for the business. So of everything you explained all about your, your career, harness racing, the horse was the biggest hit. Oh yeah, it was, uh, oh, we, we gotta use it. The horses are great. Uh, I've been raised on the farm and I always been going to the f stable every night to watch my, my, my pony back in the day. And uh, you know, it's so fun to, uh, the contact between uh, us and the horse and we gotta use it out there and uh, that's the only thing I can save us, right? 
Exactly. And Amelia, did you and your friends have a lot of fun? Yes. Are you really proud of your dad for doing career day? Yes. All right, thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Simon and Amelia. Thank you so much. That was a great thing that Simon did. Oh, yeah. Yes. And we have more races to get to. All right. Yes, Harris, Philadelphia, huge bomber here. Let me tell you, it's Phillies and Mares, non-winner, 7,000, last five, first 11,000. Number eight, Carlotta, blue chip, taking a step down in class. And this is the favorite in here with 2014 driver of the year, Yannick Shingra on the bike. And then there's number nine, better business. See, at Paris, Philly, we fit eight across on the gate. So if you got the nine hole, it's a trailer. Watch for this horse. And here comes Better Business out three wide at 89 to one. Better Business takes the lead. A lot of blue chips back to second. Twin B. Heartland starting the fade. Real leggy at the inside. Jarnak moving up three wide now, shy of three quarters. Four lengths back to Tell Rosie at the inside. Sixth. RX Jolt is seventh around the turn. Cinder Rose is eighth and Sandy Hook Handle was 15 lengths away from Better Business, who's trying to pull off a major shocker. 123 and 3 for quarter 3. Better Business up by 3. Jarnak starts the car, but to the margin. A lot of blue chip trying to re-rally at the inside. Third a length better than Rio Leggy. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Better Business can she hold? Up the inside Carlotta blue chip. Outside Jarnak 3 to a drive. Better Business inside Carlotta blue chip down to the finish. The tote board will explode. Better Business. And you know what else starts with a B? What? Bombs away. Yes. Better business bureau? <laughs> no, bombs away starts with a B. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, David Miller does not start with a B, but he was the driver. They end up winning in 153 and 2. I'm telling you what, David Miller, Hall of Famer and miracle maker here. The horse pays $180.40. Say what? Crazy. Even right? in this economy, I a lot. Oh, right? <laughs> Carlota Blue Chip was second. Rounding out the try was Jarnak. All right, how about this one? In that race, the favorite is second, which makes it a no-brainer. Do it all the time. You just take every horse and put it on top of the favorite, who was second here. The exacto returned 789 bucks. The parlay was like 550. Why does this happen only when I don't have these things? I don't know. When you're thinking about that during the break, we're going to come back with some major national action, and we'll have a look at the 2013 Horse of the Year, who goes against the boys again at the Big M. Don't you dare go away. Be a magician on the outside, and be a magician is marching up after the lead. Life. It all comes down to the things you do. The places you see. The people you meet. It's all of the beautiful things. The incredible things. And the spectacular things. That makes us feel unexplainable things. Life is going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Hey there, we're back on PA Harness Week. She's Heather, I'm Stephen. Heather, I am so excited because the final of the Cutler Memorial took place, 183 dimes on the line in the week before in the Alim Be a Magician, 2013 Horse of the Year. One from the 10 all against the boys. Could she repeat? against the boys again? Heather's going to tell you. Yes, I am. She doesn't have a great post again. She has the eight hole, right? And you're right. She is two for two. Crushed him at Yonkers. Crushed him at the Big M. But then there's number six, Wind of the North. This is his final American appearance before he hopped on a plane this week to go to Sweden for the Elite Lop. So, that you, well, yeah, I know. And then there's number 10, Miladies Monet. Not getting a lot of play, but um, because of the post position. This is not this horse's first rodeo with a tough post, okay? He can come off the trot. Be a magician on the outside, and Be a magician is marching up after the lead. She is into second on the wheel of wind of the north, and Be a magician brushes past to take the lead. Opening night on the inside is for DW's New York Yank to the outside fifth. Miladies Monet picks up that cover second over, but he's at least six lengths from the lead of Be a magician. The half and 55 and two. Appomattox driving.
coming up in traffic on the inside seventh. Master of Laws third over. He's eighth on the outside. Be a magician in control at the midpoint of the far turn. Wind to the north is right there in the pocket spot in second. And DW's New York Yank is working first over. He's two lengths away. A rail ride all the way for Lindy's True Grit. Mulady's Monet sitting loose cover second over, but in with a puncher's chance three and a half from the lead. One, 23 and four for three quarters. And they come to the top of the stretch and leading the way it's Be a Magician. Be a Magician still out there with a two length advantage. Wind to the north, full out on the inside second. Mulady's Monet is coming on on the outside. Be a Magician edging out to a two and a half length margin. Then wind to the north on the outside, but it's Be a Magician who's trotting home in the Cutler for Brian Sears. And Be a Magician wins the Arthur Cutler. Market share and master of law both go off stride in the beginning of the race, but after they're kind of like out of the way and all that interference is done, we've got Wind of the North taking the top. But then there's Be a Magician. She is going for a brush, right? And not to brush her hair, to brush to the top. That's where she stays in 151 and 2 becomes the first mayor in the 17 year history of the Cutler Memorial to win this race. She chair. is just amazing. And she is so close to three million in earnings. Uh, she did have a passenger, by the way. His name is Brian Sears, mm -hmm. yes. And then her trainer is Nifty Norman. Congratulations to them. Wind of the North was second. And then Milady's Monet ended up being third. Saturday's 11th at the Big M, TVG free for all pace, number one. Modern Legend was six to five. Number six, JK's End of an Era was eight to five with Yannick Jingron. Number five, Davuto Hanover was three to one with Brian Sears. And here's the call. So Davuto Hanover with a backside brush is coming up after JK End of an Era. And Davuto Hanover now to the leader's wheel and applying pressure. Modern Legend wheels to the outside following that live cover. So Whirl We Need is shuffled back on the inside and he has room to angle off the pones there. And they're three wide as they reach the half mile split in 50. 54 and 4, and Modern Legend is coming on to poke ahead in front. Davuto Hanover is now racing in second and releases Modern Legend. So Whirl We Need, he's first up on the outside, about two and a half lengths from the lead. J.K. End of an Era is back and forth on the inside. Doo-Wop Hanover starting to roll, looking to catch cover, and Wake Up Peter is three lengths last, trailing the field, and Modern Legend edges out to a three-length lead. It's Modern Legend through three quarters in one, 21 and two, 26 and three there on the turn and Modern Legend and James McDonald turn for home and open it up to a three-length lead. Davuto Hanover on the inside, racing in second. Duwap Hanover gaining ground on the outside. J.K. Endovanera between them. Modern Legend tiring. Duwap Hanover. J.K. Endovanera is coming back. Modern Legend almost there. J.K. Endovanera on the outside. They're coming down to the finish. Three-way photo on the line. A microscope was needed to separate the first three finishers. J.K.'s Endovanera one in the nose, just nailing Modern Family by the same margin in 148-4. Doo-Wop Hanover off at 7-1 to one with John Campbell, another nose back in third. And now we pick up Saturday's action in the fourth at the Big M. New Jersey Cyrus takes three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers featuring the return of two-year-old Pacer of the Year, Art Speed. And the big guy, number four, didn't disappoint, winning by three and 149 flat for Scott Zeron as a three to two chalk. Number five, Go Kudo Hanover, the nine to five second choice of John Campbell, second. Number one, Delt, a winner off a two to one with Dave Miller, got third. Okay, now we have three year old Philly Trotters, New Jersey Sire Stakes. The big headline here is Mission Brief is making her debut of the season. Heavy favorite, she was voted last year's freshman lady trotting champ, and she won easily in 153 and 4. Now, don't forget last season she to took a totally amazing world record mark of 153, so this is like lollygagging for her. Yannick Jira was in the sulky for trainer Ron Burke. Riley Street was second, Marion Millionaire was third. Finally, let's head on up to Canada for the $226,000 Confederation Cup of Flamboro Downs for four-year-old open pacers. Number five, all bets off with Matt Kikaley for Ron Burke was three to five and made it look like a steal, winning eased up in 151 and three. Number seven, better ever, off at 18 to one with Corey Callahan came from the men's room to grab the belly. Number two, Big Boy Dreams, off at 17 to one with Sylvain Fillion, got third. A couple of happy things to report. Happy 93rd birthday to Howard Beisinger. And Roger Hammer, who we love dearly, 
just got his 4,000th win at the Meadows. Congratulations to you, Roger. And that's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. For Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, my boo Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace just a taste. Get yourself high on harness. It's only natural.